Standing six feet tall, 225 pounds, and with glorious dreadlocks, this Dominican made teammates, fans, and opponents smile with his adventures in the out. Manny Ramirez back, and he makes the catch! What a catch by Ramirez! In the batter's box, he was no joke because he was feared and revered by pitchers as one of the greatest right-handed hitters in baseball history. Yes, Manny Ramirez has enjoyed a career of highs, lows, and everything in between. In this video, we will discuss the 10 things to know about his wild, unbelievable life. Number 10, Early Life. Manny Ramirez's actual name is Manuel Artistes Ramirez Onelcida. He was born on May 30th, 1972 in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic to parents Artistes and Onelcida Ramirez. As a child, Ramirez was obsessed with baseball. When he was eight years old, his grandmother got him a Dodgers uniform with the number 30 on the back, which he considers to be one of his most prized possessions. Ramirez began telling anyone who would listen that his dream was to play professional baseball. In 1985, he moved to the Washington Heights neighborhood of New York City with his parents. Despite living just a short distance from Yankee Stadium, Ramirez rooted for the Toronto Blue Jays and attended games when the Blue Jays were in town. It was because the team had his Dominican heroes George Bell and Tony Fernandez on its roster. Ramirez attended George Washington High School from 1987 to 1991 and became the best baseball player in the city after leading his high school to three straight division championships. As a high school senior, Ramirez was named New York City Public School Player of the Year in 1991, hitting for a 650 batting average with 14 home runs in 22 games. The kid was just getting started. Number 9. Climbing Through the Minors the Cleveland Indians selected Ramirez in the first round with a 13th overall pick in the 1991 Major League Baseball draft. He was designated to the rookie-level Burlington Indians for his professional debut. Manny became an instant star in the minors, slugging 19 homers and driving in 63 runs in 59 games, while leading the league in slugging and total bases. Ramirez won the Appalachian League MVP and was selected by Baseball America as Short Season Player of the Year. Ramirez still put in big numbers in 1992, despite the injuries. Yet in 1993, Ramirez was named Minor League Player of the Year by Baseball America while hitting 333 with 31 homers and 115 RBIs in 129 combined games with the AA Canton Akron Indians and AAA Charlotte Knights. Yes, at this point, Ramirez proved that he deserved the call that all young players need to hear that he was going to the show. Number 8. Entering the Show with the Indians. Ramirez made his Major League debut on September 2, 1993 against the Minnesota Twins, going hitless in four bats as a designated hitter. The following day, Ramirez and the Indians traveled to New York to face the Yankees, his hometown team. With many of his family and friends in attendance, Ramirez put on a show. 14 home runs at 36 RBIs, and look at this, a extra base hit! Humorously, his first MLB hit off of Melito Perez was an automatic double that bounced into the left field seats as left fielder Paul O'Neill pursued it. However, Ramirez seeing the ball in the seats continued running thinking he had hit a home run before returning to second base while his teammates ribbed him. Manny being Manny from the start. Who knew? In his first full season in 1994, Manny hit 269 with 17 home runs and 60 RBI in 91 games. He finished second in the Rookie of the Year voting despite the 1994 Major League Baseball strike. Ramirez's breakout season came in 1995 when he batted 308 with 31 home runs and 107 RBI. In July, he was selected to his first All-Star game and won his first career Silver Slugger award, propelling the Indians to the World Series after losing to the Braves. Manny earned a four-year extension contract. Ramirez backed up his numbers in 1996, but the power dipped in 1997, and the Indians suffered another World Series loss to the Marlins. The Florida Marlins have won the World Series! Manny continued to have stellar seasons in between 1998 and 2000, by finished third in MVP voting in 1999 with a 333 batting average, 44 home runs, and 165 RBIs. However, the World Series ring continued to elude him. Not for long. Number 7. Delivering Rings with the Red Sox The Indians tried to re-sign the young superstar, and he was reportedly pursued by the New York Yankees and Seattle Mariners. However, in December 2000, Ramirez agreed to a mammoth 8-year contract with the Boston Red Sox. Ramirez finished the 2001 season at 306 with 41 home runs and 125 RBI, setting the season franchise record of hitting the most home runs as a first-year Red Sox player. In 2002, Ramirez won the AL batting title, batting 349. 
In 2003, Ramirez finished with a 325 average, 37 home runs, and 104 RBI as he formed a formidable 3-4 duo with David Ortiz. The season ended in heartbreak with the infamous Aaron Boone homer in the ALCS. Out of the game, there's a fly ball deep to left! It's on its way! There it goes! However, in 2004, Ramirez and the Red Sox played like a team on a mission. Ramirez and teammate David Ortiz became the first pair of AL teammates to hit 40 home runs, have 100 RBIs, and bat 300 since the Yankees' Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig in 1931. In the postseason, Manny helped the Sox reverse the curse of the Bambino by helping his team come back down 0-3 to beat the Yankees. In the World Series, Manny won MVP with a 412 batting average, a home run, and 4 RBIs in a 4-game sweep of the Cardinals. After another brilliant individual season in 2005, Manny's performance dipped slightly in 2006. However, the Red Sox returned to the postseason in 2007, and Ramirez delivered an iconic walk-off three-run home run in the bottom of the ninth inning in Game 2 of the American League Division Series against the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Ramirez hit his 23rd postseason home run, passing Williams for the most all-time and propelling his team to another World Series ring. Manny and the Red Sox were on cloud nine, but trouble was brewing. Number 6. Manny being Manny. Manny is remembered for the joy and fun he brought to the sport, and his stories are legendarily hilarious. In 1995, Manny received his paycheck on the road and forgot it in a pair of shoes in the visitor's locker room. Indians manager added the comment, that's Manny being Manny. Thus, the phrase was born. In 2002, playing in a rehab game with the AAA Pawtucket Red Sox in May, Manny slid hard into third and managed to lose one of his earrings, a diamond stud worth roughly $15,000. After the game, many of Manny's teammates and members on the grounds crew helped Manny poke around in the dirt for the earring. Alas, their efforts were in vain. The diamond was never found. Only Manny, right? There are also joke moments like the high five double play and using the Green Monster bathroom during the game. The man was one of a kind. Number 5. Controversies and Awful Ending to Red Sox Tenure In 2003, the Yankees were in town and Manny was too sick to play with a case of laryngitis. That didn't stop Manny from saddling up to the hotel bar with Yankee infielder Enrique Wilson, who was a former teammate of his on the Cleveland Indians. Too sick to play, but not too sick to go out and yup it up with a buddy? Not good, Manny. After winning it all in 2007, Manny stated that he wanted to play six more years, then retire as a member of the Red Sox. Unfortunately, things didn't pan out that way. In a June 5, 2008 game against the Rays, Manny's patience for Kevin Euclid's post at bat tirades reached a breaking point. At the end of the game's fourth inning, Manny called out Uke on his antics. Uke snapped back, and Manny responded by taking a jab at Uke. A handful of other players and staff restrained Manny and walked him away from Uke. Before a June road game in Houston, Manny Ramirez asked Red Sox traveling secretary Jack McCormick to reserve him 16 seats for that night's game. When McCormick told Ramirez that he couldn't guarantee the slugger's request, Ramirez shoved McCormick, 64, to the ground and told him to just do your job. The matter was dealt with internally, and Ramirez was fined $10,000 to $15,000. He was accused of faking knee injuries and not legging out ground balls. Yes, not the happy ending fans would have hoped. Number 4. Traded to LA and two PED violations. On July 31, 2008, Ramirez was traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers in a three-way deal. Manny became a hit in Hollywood as the fans coined the nickname Manny Wood. Manny finished the season with the Dodgers by batting 396 with 17 home runs, 53 RBI in just 53 games. His combined totals were 332 batting average, 37 home runs, and 121 RBI. However, Ramirez spiraled in 2009 when he was suspended for 50 games because he violated MLB's drug prevention program. The drug was HCG, a women's fertility drug typically used by steroid users to restart their body's natural testosterone production as they come off a steroid cycle. After an injury reeled 2010 season, and even being claimed by the White Sox, Manny signed with the Rays in 2011. Ramirez abruptly retired on April 8, 2011, because he reportedly tested positive for a banned performance-enhancing drug and faced a 100-game suspension. In 2011, Ramirez got arrested in Florida on a battery charge for allegedly striking his wife, Juliana, during an argument at their home in suburban Miami. Yes, the suspensions and controversy marred Manny's sparkling career. Number 3. Comeback Attempts and Going Overseas 
In December 2011, Manny unretired and it was determined that he needed to serve only a 50 game suspension instead of 100 games. On February 20th, 2012, Ramirez signed a minor league contract with the Oakland Athletics but never made it to the majors before being released. In 2013, he signed with the newly renamed EDA Rhinos of the Chinese Professional Baseball League in Taiwan. He also signed a minor league deal with the Rangers in 2013. He later featured in a player coach role with the Cubs minor league and was hired as a hitting consultant. In 2017, he signed up to play with the Kochi Fighting Dogs of the Japanese Shikoku Island League Plus independently. In 2020, he accepted a player coach role with Australia's Sydney Blue Sox that lasted a season. Number 2. Earnings, Net Worth, and Charity According to Spotrack, Manny has earned nearly $245 million in his career. According to CelebrityNetWorth.com, Manny Ramirez is worth over $115 million. In 2008, Ramirez donated his gorgeous custom 1967 Lincoln Continental to Boston's Franciscan Children's Hospital and bidding on eBay started at $300 and rose to above $70. In July 2010, Manny Ramirez donated his 1994 Porsche 911 to be auctioned and divided between Dodgers official charity Think Cure and Maryvale, a residential placement home for girls in suburban Rosemont. Yes, Manny is a good guy. Number 1. Hall of Fame Case and Legacy While Ramirez has certainly had a Hall of Fame caliber career with Hall of Fame numbers, his chances of being elected are incredibly slim. In 2022, he received just 29% of the vote. Like many others who have tested positive for PEDs or have been connected with them, Ramirez is unlikely to be able to convince enough voters that he deserves a spot in the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. Despite the controversy that has surrounded Ramirez and his career over the past two decades, it is important not to overlook how dominant and consistent of a hitter he was over the course of his career, PEDs or not. Manny lived a wild, unbelievable life, and fans will always remember him as one of baseball's great hitters and personalities. What do you think of Manny's wild, unbelievable life? Do you think he belongs in the Hall of Fame despite PD suspensions? Let me know in the comments section. Smash the like button and subscribe for more premium sports content. Until next time.